hello, welcome. Welcome to day 11 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Day 11, January 11th, 2023, 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, Genesis 24, verse 1 to 67. New Testament, Matthew 9, verse 14 to 38. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 8, verse 1 to 9. Old Testament NIV version, Genesis 24, verse 1 to 67, Isaac and Rebekah. Abraham was now very old and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, and that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of, Ave of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master, Abraham, and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant left taking with him ten of his master's camels, loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram, Naharaim, and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time, of the, time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham. Make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar and came up again the servant hurried to meet her and said please give me a little water from your jar drink my lord she said and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink after she had given him a drink she said i will draw water for your camels too until they have enough to drink so she quickly emptied her jar into the trough ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels Without saying a word, the man watched, close, watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a beka and two, and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, whose daughter are you? Please tell me. Is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son that Milka bore to Nahor. And she added, we have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as food 
as, as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebecca had a brother named Laban and he hurried out to the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and a bracelet on his sister's arms and had heard Rebecca t- tell what the man said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man went to the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were brought for the camels and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then Food was set before him, but he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say. Then tell us, Laban said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her own old age and he has given him everything he owned and my master made me swear an oath and said you must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the canaanites in whose land i live but go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son then i asked my master what if the woman will not come back with me he replied the lord before whom i have walked faithfully will send his angel with you and make your journey a success so that you can get a wife for my son from my own clan and from my father's family you will be released from my oath if when you go to my clan they refuse to give her to you then you will be released from my oath when i came to the spring today i said lord god of my master abraham if you will please grant success to the journey on which i have come see i am standing beside this spring if a young woman comes out to draw water and i say to her please let me drink a little water from your jar and if she says to me drink and i will draw water for your camels too let her be the one the lord has chosen for my master's son before i finished praying in my heart rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder she went down to the spring and drew water and i said to her please give me a drink she quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said drink and i'll water your camels too so i drank and she watered the camels also i asked her whose daughter are you she said the daughter of bethuel son of nahor whom milka bore to him Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Hallelujah. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, Tell me, and if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebekah. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver, jewelry, and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, let the young woman remain with us 10 days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, Do not detain me. Now that the Lord has granted success to my journey, send me on my way so I may go to my master. Then they said, Let us call the young woman and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way along with her nurse 
and Abraham's servant and his men. And he blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. Hallelujah. Then Rebekah and her attendants got ready and mounted the camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahai Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebekah also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself then the servant told isaac all he had done isaac brought her into the tent of his mother sarah and he married rebecca so she became his wife and he loved her and isaac was comforted after his mother's death glory to god new testament niv version matthew 9 verse 14 to 38 jesus questioned about fasting then john's disciples came and asked him how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Hallelujah. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. Glory to God. When Jesus entered the synagogue, leaders the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes he said go away the girl is not dead but asleep but they laughed at him after the crowd had been put aside he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up news of this spread through all that region jesus healed the blind and the mute as jesus went on from there Two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, It is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. The workers are few. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 8, verse 1 to 9. For the director of music, according to Gittite, a psalm of David. Lord, our Lord, 
How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please, if you're here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And for answering my prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now, send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyu Aruleba. Thank you for being here today. It's always a pleasure having you here today. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.